and let's talk power supplies, and let's talk power supplies with multiple rails. Multiple rails or a single rail? It's a question that comes up a lot. In order to test it and go through it, you really need lab equipment. But it just so happens we have some lab equipment. And we also have someone who's very qualified to use the lab equipment. This is Johnny from Corsair. How's it going? Hey, good. Thank you. So thanks a lot. This is something I've been wanting to talk about a lot for a long time because people jump onto the forum as soon as anything and they you know as soon as anything is posted, people in Europe are like, must have multiple rails. Yes. People in America are like, you're an idiot and that's that's the end of my statement. <laughs> that's right. So let's talk about it. We, we hear the same thing. So uh, one of the things we can demonstrate with this load tester here is the fact that we can switch the 12 volt rails from a single 12 volt rail to a multiple 12 volt rail. And we can do that with our Link software. So right now in the software, we have this set to a single 12 volt rail. So what that means is all of your 12 volt capability is available on all of your connectors all of the time. So in this case, on the 1,000 watt power supply, it's just over 83 amps. Mm -hmm. So that means in any one connector, you could draw up to 83 amps and still be you know, running the power supply. Yeah, as long as the other ones aren't simultaneously drawing. Well, then yeah, then you yeah. overload the whole thing. Okay. So. <laughs> so for this demonstration, so what we have here is a 40 amp load. It's, it's 20 amps on two different loads, but they're on the same connector. So it's a 40 amp, connection, uh, 40 amp load on one connection. Now the reason why I chose 40 amps for this particular load is because if the multiple 12 volt rail setting is on, the limit for that connector to deliver is 40 amps instead of the full 83. And then I have a separate um, load test here that puts 25 amps on each load, which is a 50 amp load on the connector. So simple math, right? 20 and 20, 40, 25, 25, 50. So now you'll notice that the power supply is actually still running even though I have a 50 amp load on a single PCI Express connector. So what I'm gonna do for this demonstration, is I'm gonna bring it back down to the 40 amp load and I'm going to take the 12 volt rails and I'm gonna turn on multi-rail mode. And what that does is that then breaks up our 12 volt rails into individual 40 amp 12 volt rails for each 8 pin connector. That's an 8 pin connector for PCI Express, CPU, and then all of the Molex are on another rail that's 40 amps, and then the 24 pin is on a rail that's at 40 amps. Now watch what happens when I bring this up from 40 amps to 50 amps. If you watch right here, when I hit the button, it immediately shuts off. Now, why would you want multiple 12 volt rails? Why would you want that 40 amp limit on each of the uh, on each of your 12 volt connections? <laughs> I take it you've never seen a video card with a failed MOSFET yes. that then turned into a fireball. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. And unfortunately, um, and we see it sometimes in the tech industry. Obviously, you have. Um, you, you have shorts that don't immediately trip the short circuit protection of the power supply. They build up in a resistive load that, uh, that causes the power supply to keep sending power to the failed part more and more and more and more until it's over 40 amps and potentially up to the whole, in this case, the 1,000 watt power supply, 1,000 watts uh, to one failed part. And at the end of the day, what's that going to do? That's going to heat up the connectors, you know, char them essentially. And in some cases, I've even seen where the insulation melts and you have, you know, bare copper wire exposed. Or like you said, the FETs just like slide down the PCB because they're completely shot. Um, so we actually ship it. I'll finish show. Yeah. <laughs> so we actually ship the power supply set to multiple 12 volt rail mode. Now, most of the time when I see these failures, it's because of user error, like they pinch a wire in the, in the side panel of the case or, or they plug something in upside down, especially like floppy connectors on sound cards and stuff like that, or, or USB hubs. Um, so if they do that and they turn on the machine, um, the power supply is going to immediately shut off before anything else can happen. So if they have the machine built and then it's up and running and they feel comfortable with everything being okay the way it is, they're more than welcome to use the Link software, go in, switch it to a single 12 volt rail mode, and they're good. If they feel happy with that, you know, more power to them. Let them have it. Yeah. Okay, so in uh, America in particular, a lot of the marketing is that if you have multiple 12 volt rails, you're crazy, it's not made for gaming, you shouldn't be using that, put it in a server, put it in something else, anything but my gaming rig. Right. I want the biggest 12 volt rail ever and so I can get a 900,000 amp GPU or, you know. I, right, right. So what's, where did that start and I mean, is there any merit to that? Well, I won't, I won't name names, but um, it, way in the past, uh, probably about 2005, uh, when PCI Express or, or the PCI SIG, they started putting uh, PCI Express power connectors on graphics cards because graphics cards required more power. Unfortunately, uh, some of the power supply companies out there retrofitted their existing products to just add a PCI Express cable 
to a rail without increasing the capability of that rail. So what happened was when people bought that power supply with a high-end graphics card, the power supply would shut off. So instead of actually going back to the engineering and saying, hey, let's add another 12-volt rail or let's increase the, uh, the trip point, the OCP trip point for the 12-volt rail, um, they just said, screw it, we'll just take off the OCP altogether and make it one big 12-volt rail. And they ran with it. They marketed the heck out of it. Um, and of and course, it worked. It, and it worked because it's an American company, sold primarily in America, and, uh, and a lot of people, you know, they, they went with that idea. Um, so, yeah, so... <laughs> Uh, now, there's a lot of good 12-volt rail, there's a lot of products out there that are good multiple 12-volt rail uh, PSUs, but they also have engineers that are capable of looking at the loads of different components and saying, hmm, you know, I shouldn't have all three of these, you know, 295X2s on one 12-volt rail. Let's, you know, have one, two, three 12-volt rails. Um, in our case, what we did to make sure that even if it's in multiple 12 volt rail mode, it doesn't trip the power supply if the graphics card is overclocked and pulling a lot of power, is each 8 pin connector, like I said before, has its own 12 volt rail. So in the case of the 1000 watt, you're actually talking about eight 12 volt rails, each with a 40 amp limit. So even if you're in multiple 12 volt rail mode, the likelihood that you're going to trip your power supply off is just very unlikely. And, and if it does happen, Again, you go into the software, you turn it off, you make a single 12 volt rail, and everything's fine. Do you think there's any reason for a gamer in this day and age to still favor single at all? Um, it, it depends. It depends on the, how the uh, 12 volt rail is distributed. I mean, really, it, it really depends on the product. So I can't give it a blanket statement. I mean, for safety purposes, and that's the reason why it's so. Um, why they want it so much in Europe is because they're very concerned about safety. You know, the safety standards are very high there. Um, they're concerned about that problem you were talking about where the, the resistive load creates so much of a current draw that it, you know, overheats everything. Um, so it's a legitimate, um, it's a, it's a legitimate want to have, uh, you know, the multiple 12 volt rails. Um, single 12 volt rail. Well, it comes down to can the graphics card deal with 83 amps dumped into it if you happen to get a short on that? Well, and no, absolutely the not. The answer, yeah, is, the answer no. is no. <laughs> right, right. So, so yeah, exactly. So, I mean, so single 12 volt rail, it's it's something that you know if somebody doesn't have a properly engineered power supply and they don't have the load distribution correctly. Single 12 volt rail is like a no brainer way of of addressing that. It's not the safest solution, so that's why I'm not necessarily. Uh, you know, pro single 12 volt rail, but I also understand why people are lean toward that argument. It really is a 50 50 thing. And also, the likelihood of, of, of parts failure in general is, you know, what, maybe 5%. And, and of that 5%, the percentage of people that are going to see, you know, burn wires and stuff from the power supply, even with a single 12 volt rail, is probably another 5% of that. So it's a really niche market. So the likelihood of a single 12 volt rail having any kind of huge cat catastrophic failure is minimal but you know it's that peace of mind that you know if i had that safety on there nothing's going to happen nothing at all and well and with a build the the like in terms of like component failure versus diy something went wrong having the multiple uh, multiple rails is a much better situation in DIY because if you don't and let say that you've got something pinched against the back of your right. motherboard or whatever. In my experience, yeah. yes, absolutely. Most of the time when you need that multiple 12 volt rail and that OCP is when an end user makes a mistake. Yeah. And that, that's where we see it more than anything. Yeah. yeah. It won't turn on. It's like, well, double check you haven't pinched your cables. Right. right. It's a feature, not a bug. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it sounds, sounds to me like most of the modern components are designed to be able to handle multiple 12 volt rails. And I mean, the way everything's designed from the power supplies down to the graphics cards right. and the motherboards. They're well, all. There's also that misconception. A lot of people think that multiple 12 volt rails um, give you some sort of stability or, or something like that. But the fact of the matter is, is with that multiple 12 volt rails, you're talking about a single 12 volt rail. And all they're doing is they're taking that 12 volt rail, they're splitting up to multiple circuits, and they're putting uh, that OCP, that limit, on each of those individual circuits. So it's really not even like you're getting multiple, truly multiple 12 volt rails. So that's, that's a myth as well. Before we close out, let's talk about the ripple under load and the fan features. So we have here a 409 watt load. But you'll notice here, that the fan, whoop, it just started spinning. So in Link, one of the things you can do is either set your fan to a fixed RPM, like here I've got it set to 60%, it's a PWM, so 60%, that's giving me an RPM of 992, um, or the default mode, which is where you get that zero RPM mode, 
at a 40% load or lower. Now you notice when I changed that to default load, the uh, fan went to zero. And if you look over here, fan's not spinning. But we have a 409 watt load. So that's a little over 40%. Room's a little warm, so I expect maybe that's probably gonna start kicking in in about 10 minutes. But in most people's houses, a 400 watt load, that's, you know, that's easy like a, a seriously overclocked graphics card and you're not gonna get any noise out of your power supply. And the, the, just the airflow from the case fan is probably enough to keep that cool at 40% load. Well, and also just the efficiency of the power supply itself. I mean, if you think about it, it's 80 plus power supply. Uh, so you're at 92% efficient, 400 watts of power, only about 10% of that is wasted heat. So really not that much heat generated by the power supply. Well, we've, we've had to do a few um, customized builds over the last couple of years for like sound professionals and people that really did not want any background noise at all. Right. And so we see them buying extremely high wattage power supplies with exactly. the fan shut off just, and they, they're never gonna run it at a yeah. thousand watts, but they like the silence. Well, that's true, right. And, and, and the, the reason for that is of course, all the components inside are beefed up to put out that much power. So if you're running at a much lower wattage, you're really you're just babying the thing. It's not going to run hot at all. So yeah, you don't need a fan for that. And that's what we're doing here with the thousand watt power supply with a 400 watt load. It's like, yeah, what? What are you? That's nothing. So it tickles a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and then that's for the fan. Like I said, and you can change it from the fanless mode to multiple 12 volt rails. I'm going to go ahead and hop over to my oscilloscope here. No, I do not want to save changes. Okay, so I'm going to change over to my oscilloscope. And with this, what we're showing is that the ripple on the 12 volt rail, if I can click on this, right? The ripple on the 12 volt rail, even with, so right now I'm still at the 400 watt load. So it's only 7.6 millivolts peak to peak, but I'm gonna jump it up to 1000 watts, full load on the RM1000i. And you can see that my peak to peak uh, voltage of ripple millivolts is just under 10 millivolts. So that's, I mean, we basically bested ourselves uh, our high-end product from uh, the last year, we've pretty much cut that ripple in half from where it was last year. And that puts us at about one-third of what most of the other high-end product out on the market is. So we're really proud of, uh, of all the work that engineering's done over the last year to, to help make this product work. So now you guys have the science, and when you see people yelling and screaming without any science, maybe you could share this video with them, and then we'll all be enlightened together. Won't that be fun? Cool. So, Johnny, thanks very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Pleasure. It's really awesome. Yep. Always like to learn more about how the stuff works under the hood. Yep. Great. Thank you. Thanks for coming by.